Section four is energy. And there are many different types of energy, the ones used in your book that they have at least are kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with the motion of an object. You can see the equation for determining the kinetic energy of a moving object. It is one half mv squared, where m is the mass of the object and v is the velocity. The potential energy is the stored energy of an object. It can be based on the height of an object that is above a surface, or it can be, more importantly for this class, associated with the amount of energy stored within a chemical bond. Energy itself is defined as the capacity to do work. Um, we could put this in the context of lifting weights. Um, you have to put work into the weights to push them against gravity. So if you're doing a bench press, for example, you have to push up against the atmosphere, pushing down on it. The gravitational forces of Earth are going to push it down, but you have to put work in to push that weight up above your chest against that gravitational force. At some point, the force of the pull down towards Earth due to gravity and your pushing up will be the same. And so the weights will stay there. But if you let go of your work that you're doing pushing up, your weight will come down. And at that point, Earth is going to be working on you. So as you lift the weight up against gravity, you are doing work. As you're letting it back down toward your chest, Earth is doing work on you. And that's how um, potential energy works. No pun intended. Heat is defined as the energy associated with the motion of particles. Heat is also probably more appropriately defined as the transfer of kinetic energy from one substance to another. Um, that's why you can say, I'm going to heat this up. I'm adding energy to it. The particles in there are going to move faster. They're going to have more kinetic energy as they heat up. Units of energy are joules or calories. Joule has the symbol uh, capital J, and calories have the C-A-L there. Joule is the SI unit of energy. And it's gotten from the equation I have here, work equals force times distance. Okay. And force ultimately is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so that's how we get it. Also, we can say work is equal to the mass of an object times the acceleration needed to move an object a certain distance. The actual SI units for work are kilograms meters squared per second squared. We don't want to use that, so we use joules instead. One joule is equal to one kilogram times a meter squared per second squared. Okay. Another standard unit of energy is the calorie, and that is defined as the amount of energy required to raise exactly one gram of water by exactly one degree Celsius. So it ultimately takes 4.184 joules of energy to do that. And this diagram here shows energy in joules of various things, like the amount of energy used to sleep for one hour is 10 to the fifth joules. That's, um, that's 100,000 joules just to sleep your, your body is using. Sounds like a lot, but if you put that in context of the amount of energy from one gallon of gasoline, let me zoom in here. You can see 
it's 10 to the eighth joules. That's a thousand times more energy to burn one gallon of gasoline. You can go further. Energy used per person in one year in the United States is 10 to the 11th joules. So that could mean that in one year, every person is essentially using 1,000 gallons of gasoline. That'd be like three gallons a day. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it's, it is a lot of energy. Think about how much work your car is doing. You're taking a two, three ton piece of metal and you're moving it, let's say 70 miles per hour and one gallon can drive at that speed, at least in my car, for almost 30 miles. Something that weighs 5,000 pounds can go 30 miles in and moving at 70 miles per hour. That's incredible. There's so much energy released from gasoline. But if we look compared to more things, we can see the solar energy reaching Earth every second is 10 to the 17th joules. And the energy consumption in each year in the United States is 10 to the 20th. So we use a thousand times as much energy per year as the, earth, as the sun is giving the Earth each second. I mean, that's it's not really more, it's a much longer time period, but um, you can see if you compare these, there's more than enough energy from the sun to, to power everything we humans are doing. Do we want to harness all of that energy? I don't know. It seems like people don't want to, but it's certainly something maybe we should think about. Um, especially considering the world reserves of fossil fuels are 10 to the 30 or 10 to the 23rd joules. So that means every year in, in the United States we're using one one thousandth that amount. That's just America. Now connect that to the whole world and we won't be having fossil fuels for very long. All right, section five is energy and nutrition. Um, you probably know that if you look at a nutrition label, it tells you how many calories are there. But what you may not know is that the calories listed are kilocalories. A capital C in the calorie means a kilocalorie or 1,000 calories. So if your diet says, if, if let's say you have a Snickers bar and it says it's got 210 calories, it's really 210,000 lowercase calories. If we were trying to convert that to <clears throat> joules then, what you would do is you would multiply by 4.184 joules per calorie, lowercase c, and you get 878,000 640 joules. The calories cancel out there. So this is 878, I guess I should round it to 879 kilojoules in that imaginary Snickers bar. These calories are measured by what's called a bomb calorimeter, which you can see right here. Basically, they take the piece of food, they put it inside of a closed container, so there's the food, and they've got these wires here, which go into it, and when the, everything is all ready, they put electricity through the wires, and those heat up and burn the food. That food, while it's burning, is going to radiate energy out going to go out and that energy is going to be absorbed by the water surrounding it 
This whole thing is called a bomb calorimeter. Calorimeter meaning it's measuring calories. So what you see here is that there is a thermometer. And so it can measure the temperature change before ignition and then after ignition, the stir bar here is just going to make sure the water is equilibrated throughout the entire system. But based upon the change in temperature from beginning to end, you can calculate the amount of energy stored within that uh, sample of food. And that's exactly how calories for food are determined. The tables here on this slide show you uh, comparisons of different types of food and how many calories they have and the different types of nutrients and the calories they have. So the first one here just shows carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and how many kilocalories each has. And then the table on the right shows you specific types of food. So you can see what type of food should you eat. Obviously you need a little bit of everything, but you could look at this and see what are the healthiest foods on here. Maybe you might look at, I want a high protein diet that's not fattening. So I see I got 22, 20, 16, and 19 there. All right. But if you compare the fats for each, you've got 14 for beef, you've got 27 for steak. Now you could compare sugars. The chicken and the salmon both have no sugar in them. So you might want to choose, if you're trying to get a high protein diet, skinless chicken and salmon. All right. This here shows um, average or necessary caloric intake based upon gender and age. So there's females between 19 and 30 years of age, and 31 and 50 years of age, and then same thing for males. Um, and then you can see it's also based upon moderately active versus highly active. Let's pretend we're all highly active individuals. I'm 33 years old, so if I'm a highly active male, I need 2,900 uh, kilocalories every single day. The table on the right shows you some energies for that each activity is going to waste per hour. So sleeping, you're going to use 60 calories per hour. Sitting, you just sit there and do nothing, uses up 100. Running, all the way up to 750 kilocalories per hour. All right, the topics covered in today's lesson are calories, energy, energy values, heat, joules, kinetic energy, and that's it. Again, I would like you to take a look at these problems and work on them. They're the same ones listed on the previous lecture, but again, you should do these. These are not the assigned ones again, just extra work for you to do.